I'm Sophia, and this is part four of modernizing traditional Java apps for developers. In part three, I move beyond the lift and shift paradigm of containerizing a monolithic Java application by breaking out one of the functions into a microservice. I created a microservice that sends user information to mess to a messaging component implemented in Redis. I added a worker service that reads the queue and saves the user data to a MySQL database. I implemented the messaging queue using Spring Boot and Redis, two technologies not commonly found in a typical Java and tier application. The application now has more moving parts, but configuration and deployment is simplified by using a Docker Compose file, which specifies the containers, network, and storage used in the application. The Docker platform enables taking the application one step further with little effort. To demonstrate this, I'll add self-service analytics, and I'll do this by adding Elasticsearch as another data store for a reporting database. To gather the data for the reporting database, I've added code to the worker that listens to the events published by the web application. The analytics worker receives the data and saves it in Elasticsearch, which is running in a Docker container. I've chosen Elasticsearch because it can be clustered across multiple containers for redundancy, and it also has Kibana, which is an excellent front end for analytics. I'm not making changes to the application or the registration microservice, so I can just add new services for Elasticsearch and Kibana in the Docker Compose file. One of the features of Docker is that Docker Compose can incrementally upgrade an application. It won't replace running containers if their definition matches the service in the Docker Compose file. Since there are new services but no changes to the existing containers, running docker compose up d will run the containers for Elasticsearch, Kibana, and the message handler. And it will leave the other containers running as is, letting you add new features without taking the application offline so you have no downtime. When the containers have started, I can use Docker Inspect to get the IP address of the Kibana container and browse to port 5601 on that address. Kibana has a simple and easy to use interface, and I can build a dashboard that shows key metrics for people signing up. In this example, I signed up the crew of the Firefly and calculated their age. The bar chart shows the crew members by descending age. Power users can find their way around Kibana, and they can make their visualizations and dashboards without coding. The core of that feature comes from the enterprise-grade open source software that can be pulled up into my application. The custom component to feed data into the document store is a simple POJO application, and the Docker platform takes care of plugging the components together. As you can see, portability is one of the advantages of Docker, and applications packaged in Docker images will run exactly the same on any host. I'll make the images available by publishing them on a Docker trusted registry. The images can then pulled from the registry and run containers from them. The app is ready for testing and deployment in a shared environment. I do this by tagging the images and pushing them up to Docker Trusted Registry. Once in the registry, I can deploy the application to Docker E using the Docker Compose file. From Docker E, I can make the app available for testing, and I'll cover that in part five. And if you want to get started modernizing your own app, head to Play with Docker, a training site which is an online environment with Docker configured that has a lot of great tutorials. If you want us to help you modernize your application suite, head to docker.com slash MTA to learn how we partner a Docker architect with an infrastructure provider such as Microsoft or Accenture to bring your apps into the modern world.